I'm back hey. for the very first time. Hey, look Good at to you. see you. I missed oh. you. Right? <laughs> no, you were awesome. We had so much fun on set. I was like, hey. I had to come back. So. <laughs> we're so happy that you're back. I'm glad to be back, too. And um, the Grio Awards, again, mm. super awesome. And thank you so much, Jorge, for you and the Mocha in the Morning. Oh, yes. Yeah, cool. out. We had to represent. We had to represent. Yes. It was super, super awesome. It was awesome. I tried to rig it so you guys would win, but that was <laughs> So, no, we don't want to be any part of any kind of <laughs> collusion, and there is no quid pro quo on the show. Right, none whatsoever. <laughs> Anyways, but first, coffee. Mocha in the morning is sponsored by Bill Curry Ford. Steamers for you. What do you got for me, Jorge? All right, so um, according to EW.com, mm -hmm. it looks like Eddie Murphy is going to make a triumphant return yes. to Saturday Night Live. I am so excited to see this. So when I was a little kid, I watched plenty of SNL. I wasn't supposed to, but I did. And I remember those skits with Eddie Murphy. Right? And I remember laughing my head off. Even I know. though I'm pretty sure I didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? I mean, I mean, so many amazing like superstars have come out of yes. SNL. So um, it'll be interesting to see like what they're gonna bring back, not bring back, because he's also coming back to like you know the tour, like yes. come out to the stage for stand up. Yeah, and we yeah. all remember his icon. <laughs> I just remember his <laughs> iconic leather suits. Oh, look, that red leather suit. <laughs> right? Hey, listen. And there's also a blue a one. A blue one, yeah. But the red one is my favorite. Woo, That's anyways, my favorite. you need to steam it up in them suits. <laughs> so let's see if anything piping hot comes out of his SNL appearance. Okay. The other thing is, um, according to Mashable.com, mm -hmm. Lauren Hill dropped her new single. Remember, okay, I know we talked about that she was working yes. on new material mm -hmm. and possibly a new album, right. but she dropped a single. Yes. And uh, I took a listen to it. Okay, what did you think? Uh, first of all, like if you like an artist, you're always gonna like what they do, right? Yeah. I just think that, um, and I was talking to our producer about this. It's kind of, you know, you've been like out for a hot minute, yeah. you know, to kind of bring yourself back into the music scene. Mm -hmm. Like, I really think you need to have a larger and a stronger catalog. It doesn't like to like you got ton albums and you can just tour and make coins Woo. off of like all your material. So I think it's gonna be a little difficult for Lauren to kind of like. Get some radio play kind of thing. I don't know. This is Lauren Hill. Like, mm -hmm. this is just some yo yo off the street. That's true, though. I but mean, we all know. I mean, it just seems we're always waiting around for her. That's true. And then let's add this is going to be the single is from the new movie Queen and Slim. Yes, right? which is coming out. I can't wait till that comes out. Next week, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Be awesome. okay. And the other thing is, too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so if you go to ET Online, yes. you will see that guess who's going to be making an appearance ooh, at ooh. the Red Table? Ooh, 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 ooh. T.I. and Jada Pinkett. Who? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be on Jada Pinkett's show. Yeah, so apparently, because we talked okay. about this last week, the whole yeah, drama yeah, between, yeah. like, whatever, whatever, right. like, the daughter and the, that, you know what I'm saying? Well, um, and I really love Red Table Talk with Jada I Pinkett. I love Red Table Talk, but yes. let me, in this instance, why didn't she invite the daughter? Why T.I.? We already know his perspective on the whole thing, right? <gasps> right, Let's because I think maybe her daughter can get the key key with Jamie, with um, T.I.'s daughter, and they can be like, have a... The and, daughter was wronged in this instance, right? Let's find out what she's thinking. Yeah, apparently she you unfollowed know? her dad. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah we already know media. what he thinks about the whole situation. So anyways, um, we'll see if any of these steamers become piping hot topics. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change.
Welcome back. I'm Kenya. This is Mocha in the morning. I'm officially Jorge. <laughs> okay, let's dive right on into some piping hot topics. And this week we have joining us our favorite Mocha in the morning contributors. We have Kicking It with Kia, serving us with some braid respect. Hey, Kia. Hey, what's up, guys? And we also have our financial guru, Genevieve Jeez. Dobson. Hey, girl, hey. Hi, good morning. Word. Okay, let's, let's go oh, right let's in. Let's do it. Okay, so. Uh, last week we talked about uh, the um, about Rodney Reed yes. and what was happening with his whole, you know. This, this was the guy that was scheduled to be executed, yes, right? And right. He had obviously got a stay of execution. Yes. So, so according to democracy.now.org, mm -hmm. you can read all about it. Um, he has uh, the chance to actually prove his innocence yeah. um, in that murder that he was, you know, accused of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really big deal, really big deal. He's getting a chance to pretty much uh, tell his side, more of his side again, if you will, um, you know, to I just, uh, you know, to be locked up in prison for doing something that you didn't do, you know, and years later, I mean, how do, I mean, how do you even get back to functioning? I, you can, I kind of feel like your life is just stolen yeah. from you, right? Yeah. And then, you know, Kim Kardashian comes in, you know, for the rescue. How do you feel about that? So this whole situation is a little weird. It's getting a little bit more convoluted. I'm glad his execution was stayed. I think it's great that he deserves a fair trial, but now it's come out and people, now activists are kind of going back and forth because some people are saying, well, he was charged with the same thing, you know, a couple of years before he was charged with the murder of, you know, the, the current woman. So it's just, it's a weird situation. I'm glad he's getting a new trial and I'm just hoping that all the facts come out so that we can finally have this resolved. And maybe this will stop celebrities maybe from jumping the gun on jumping on bandwagons because I'm a little put off by that at this point. That's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, there's so much that's come out and it's hard to really know for sure what's going on now. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, obviously none of us really know if he did it or not. And there doesn't seem to be enough evidence, which, you know, from my understanding, if you don't have enough evidence, I mean, there's gotta be like, you know, some kind of burden of proof. Um, so I, I don't think that he should be executed, but we definitely need, need to figure out what's going on. Um, you know, so that this can be ended at some point, one way or the other. So, but but I'm glad that at least that happened, because if he didn't do it, we don't want to execute the wrong person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is too in this day and age, right, mm -hmm. where it looks like you know, or it seems as if the facts seem to be what's on trial, right? Sure. You know, on deciding whether or not the facts are the facts, right. and that's I mean, as a journalist. You know, I mean, everything's supposed to be based on an objective perspective or a view on the facts. Right. And every day, it seems as if everyday people mm -hmm. are always just trying to prove what the facts are. Yeah. When the facts are just facts, it just should be obvious and plain as day. Right. Yeah. And I think in this instance, there's also the there was the claim that you know the evidence that was taken back in that day and tested. DNA evidence has, uh, technology rather, has advanced so much since 1994 when this was all first went down. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that mm -hmm. kind of shakes out. Mm. Okay, let's uh, move on to other yeah, facts. Yeah. So um, according to CNBC.com, mm -hmm. it looks like Chick-fil-A is going to stop contributing to anti-LGBTQ uh, organizations. Now this is the thing. I've heard it all before, all your <laughs> lies. Chicken this, chicken that. <laughs> so I don't know how this is gonna. I mean, I'm still not eating there. Okay, and uh, yeah. So and then uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like with you, Jorge. Like, what else? You know, what else you got? You know, right? it's like okay. And then they're only gonna stop donating to these two organizations, just two. Mm. You know, so. So let's get the perspective from our two. Milk in the morning contributors. <laughs> Wanna go so, first? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're laughing because it's, it's like, okay, I'll just say this and the jig can go. They had to find a way to compete with Popeyes. And this was the best way they came up with to compete with Popeyes chicken. You can't make better chicken than Popeyes, but at least we can be nicer people. Um, and in their defense, <laughs> the two organizations they give money to, they give, these are the two they give the most money to. And they're the most religious. 
like they give a lot of money to other things, but these are the ones that are, you know, very Christian, very anti-gay, very, you know, because one of them is called um, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes that I used to be a member of, and they are, there's a lot of gay women in, in, in athletics. So for them to do that, it seems a little weird, but that's just my opinion. But no chicken, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. Like, it was like, it was like, okay, we're seeing our numbers drop. We see that there is an alternative to a chicken sandwich. Um, and so, I mean, so, so that's the thing, because I mean, I had stopped going to, to Chick-fil-A for a very long time. I literally just recently kind of started going there now and again, but I stopped going because of their views, you know, and I, I think their views are a little outrageous. Um, but I think, you know, I, they're, they're probably going to gain some more clients by doing this. Um, and I think they recognize that they probably need the LGBT community to get a lot. Cause I mean, the LGBT community is very supportive of each other. Okay. So when they, right. So when they band together, they band together. So, um, you know, I think Chick-fil-A is like, okay, we need to change up this, you know, change this up completely. So. I don't know. I think right, it's all because I know. I know. In my house, we eat a lot of chicken. But I mean, who knew? Oh, right? Wait a minute. Right. Right. The LGBT community eats chicken. We eat chicken too. But the problem was the LGBT uh, lined up for Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're real. Right. Where they lined up for Popeyes? I think that in order for me to like to buy into this mm -hmm. or to even consider on um, um, going back to dining at Chick Fil A. I need to see that Chick-fil-A is, we'll do a tally of all the, the money that they've donated and given to uh, organizations who are anti-LGBTQ um, and take that lump sum and then Ooh. from there, right, donate that chunk to pro okay. anti or allies and advocates of anti-LGBTQ okay. like and then from there, keep, mm -hmm. keep the funds rolling in. Then I'll see if I might, you know, have some of your nuggets and some of your coleslaw. <laughs> like, you know, put the money back in a different coop and see what kind of eggs pop out of there. I like that. We don't want it, Chick-fil-A. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So what else we got? The speaking of not so nice people, mm. I don't know, this Stephen Miller dude. Yeah. I um, really think, mm. you know, I think it's like a personal internal mm -hmm. I'm not man enough thing going on with him yeah kind of thing and I think that he chooses mm -hmm. his white supremacist ways mm -hmm. like he chooses to channel whatever is going on inside of him mm -hmm. out to the world like that that when you're in the White House and people leak your emails about your white supremacist Tennessee oh, right yeah, yeah. and I, it, like just look it up on Newsweek I mean you know <laughs> yeah I think he forgot where he works. And so <laughs> when he was sending out these nasty emails, you know, didn't think about maybe perhaps one day these could be public record. Ooh, yeah. Right? And because we all know the White House has a plumbing issue. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh, and he also could be mad because he lost his hair. Okay, well, there's, I mean, you could do something about that. <laughs> you know, I don't want to mention the product because they ain't paying for the spot, but you could always do something about that. What do hair you, plugs. What do you think, Kia? Rugs. We're not trying to be petty, but you can be. be. <laughs> I'm going to exactly. be petty. He has been doing, this is not new. As for people who are into politics, like I am, you know, Jim's business, I'm politics. He has been racist since his college years. There's actually video of him giving speeches about being pro-white and we shouldn't let him. Oh, no. This, when they had these emails come out, my whole response was, this ain't news. He's been like this the entire time. And this has been out for now, what, four, hey, three weeks? Mm -hmm. And he still hasn't been fired? So what's happening? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's definitely not a shocker um, for sure. But, but it's kind of, it just kind of goes to show, like, how much influence, you know, somebody can have. I mean, all of the hate emails and all of the conversations, you know, that could really be influential to especially like younger minds that might be seeing those things come across. Um, so 
but but we know it happens. I mean, and he's not the only one doing it, of course. So we we recognize it happens, but it's good that you know the emails were leaked so we can kind of see, you know, what's really going on in the back end. You know, I, I don't know. With this administration, it's so easy for them to say, I don't remember writing that. Those emails could have came from anybody. We could have been hacked. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's. I mean, but this is the stuff that's happening. Yeah. Like in the White House. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and. In this day and age, again, with your plumbing issue, I mean, people need to, like, look, be who you are, that's fine, but this is the thing, but not on our taxpayer dollars. Ah, very good point. You know what I'm saying? You can very be where you want to be mm -hmm. when it's your money, mm -hmm. your time, but when our tax dollars, right. you know, are paying your salary, well, then I really think that there is an expectation on your behavior, what you should say, what she, you should be about. Because if that is the case, then they'll be taking our money, exactly. right? Yes. You know, yeah. so you can have a job. <laughs> okay. And that's it. And that's it. All right. So, Carl, Anyways, have a so I think that was a fumble on his part. All righty. Which leads to our next topic. <laughs> Okay, so Colin Kaepernick, yep. uh, we thought he was going to work out on Saturday. It was mm. all set up, yeah. and then it wasn't, right? <laughs> so I think, I think what happened is that he got wind that Jorge and I were trying to scheme to get into the room, so. and he was Look, like, no. We couldn't Uber fast enough <laughs> to the other location. <laughs> right. I think, this is so funny, um, because this was supposed to be like a big major, like, hey, he's coming back. So if you go to the root.com, so they published the story. Mm -hmm. So all of the talent scouts, agents, whatever, that were supposed to uh, be a part of his workout, which the workout is right. like everyone comes to see you, mm -hmm. you know, do your thing. Throw the yeah. ball, right. catch it, run with it, on it. Right. So that, right? But then he changed the location. Wait, wait a minute now. Wait, a minute now. <laughs> wait, wait. Let's talk about why he had to change the location. Right. Okay. To the high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, well, here's the thing. Uh, there were some things that he and the NFL couldn't come to an agreement on. So that led to his having to cancel the NFL sanctioned workout and host his own, right? <laughs> so I think this is, you know, what happened is that there was an agreement on one thing. One party didn't come through on their side of the agreement. And so... Kaepernick said, hey, sorry, got to move this across town. I think he was fully within his right to do so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Jen, what do you think? <sighs> this is a hard one. <laughs> oh, heavy what a sigh. Great. <laughs> heavy sigh. Wow. Well, because, like, so I, like, I, I see it from both sides. Like, I see it from Colin's side saying, okay, I want to control the narrative. I want to make sure that my expectations of what happens is controlled by me because I don't necessarily trust the NFL and I don't necessarily trust the media and I don't trust that I'm going to get what I'm supposed to. But then at the same token, like I, you know, I read some other comments where people are like, okay, we get you, but at the same token, like you're trying out for a job. So it's like, it, the, the job itself is going to have some stipulations, some requirements, right? And it just seems like to me, like, now he's almost making it really difficult on both sides. Like, so, so like the NFL and everything that's going on and he didn't, you know, the paperwork wasn't right and all of that. And then he's like, ah, I don't want to do any of anything that they want me to do. So it's just, I, don't, I think it's a mess. Somebody said that he's just trying to be a martyr. He's not really trying to play football. Um, so you think maybe this was like a setup? Right, like maybe... I mean, because, I mean, come on, he came out with the Kunta Kente shirt on. Like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like the, there is a lot that maybe he didn't do that he could have just let slide. I don't know. Look, don't know. Right, so you are implying that maybe Colin is being messy. Oh, <laughs> he, he, right. He's I being a little disagree. messy. I think he would have worn the Kunta Kente shirt, even if they had had mm. the tryouts at the Falcons facility as mm. it was originally planned. I think uh, I do agree that both parties are right to, you know, uh, do what's in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's what people are missing. That waiver that the NFL wanted Colin to sign would have not been good for him. Uh, he basically would have to give up his right to sue them ever again. Oh, under yeah. Under any circumstance. Yeah. 
I don't, that's, that's not a, a good deal. That's like the after stunt. Yeah. Right, the after stunt. Well, the one cool thing I think about um, it moving to the high school is, like, it would have been awesome if, like, they invited, like, the high school kids yeah. and maybe open up, yeah. like, the concession stands so they can generate <laughs> some money for their pet rally club. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> right? definitely. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. Because we got spirit. Yes, we do. <laughs> we got spirit, Colin. How about you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. They should have they should have maybe planned it out better and done a better job of of seizing the opportunity at the high school. Um, I don't think that they did a really good job doing that. And and from my understanding, a lot of the you know the the people that were going to come out to see him kind of had to scramble to, to to move locations. So I don't know. It was just very messy. Like I think uh, it was a long. So I don't know if it was like their emergency plan or backup plan, but it definitely was a stunt. Okay. So, anyway, so <laughs> and on that, let's talk about some other stuff. Yes, let's talk about the Soul Train Award. Yes. All the fabulous fashion moments. Ah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so here's my pet peeve about the Soul Train Awards. Okay, great. Artists just don't seem to treat it on the same level as the Grammys. <laughs> like some folks come in a t-shirt and jeans, but they do that at the Grammys too. So let me right. not, let me not. But I think I just didn't see a whole lot of dress up. Mm. You know, like a whole lot of, ooh, that gown was fabulous. You know, I didn't get a whole lot. I think sometimes also, the t like, I love the Soul Train Awards. I and too. sometimes I don't think, like, you know, I think, like, a lot of artists, once they reach a certain level, mm -hmm. like, they don't ever show up. You know, <laughs> kind of, you know? And it's like, right. why y'all doing the Soul Train Awards like that? Yeah. Like, that's the... Uh, I mean... I mean, come on now. It's for the people. By right? the people. By the people. Yeah, I mean, and like... I mean, come on now. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so what about you, Jen? Look, so, okay, don't hate me, but I didn't watch the Soul Train Awards. <gasps> but I mean, it's just not, it's not my thing. And I'm super busy. I'm super busy. But the one thing that I thought was interesting that I read was that Blue Ivy won an award. I saw something about that. She too. did. Yeah. yeah. There was she a lot won. of interesting newsy tidbits coming out of this year's Soul Train musical. Yeah, yeah. like she won like songwriter of mm -hmm. the year or something for Brown Skin Girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought that was weird, right? Am I wrong? <laughs> Why would it be weird if her name is officially on the song as a songwriter? Well, and she got nominated. She didn't write that song. <laughs> hey, hey, ma'am. Well, but listen. You don't you weren't there. Look, the way that music is being written nowadays, like, I I mean, I think she's following in Beyonce's, like, oh, footsteps. It's kind of like, I wrote this whole song, mm -hmm. and then you're going to come in and be like, hey, <laughs> like, oh, I need, a, I need a writing credit on that, right? They yeah. like, say you write a song, and you're like, hey, like, would it be on this song with me? I'm like, yeah, let me see. Okay, so, yes. Okay, I need a writing credit for that. Hey, if you it know, gets you paid, you know, it doesn't I'm just really saying. matter. Yeah, you know, so there are, and with that, there are probably plenty of um, songs that I can have a writing credit on. Oh, okay. But let's talk about Lizzo. Yes, let's talk about this Lizzo well, and Ari so, Lennox um, situation. Yeah, Black Twitter was talking about like they don't understand why she won. Yeah, there's been a little upset on Twitter, if you will, about how Lizzo won over uh, Ari Lennox in uh, I think it was the best R and B uh, yeah. album category. And the argument is that Lizzo is not R and B; she's a rapper. Now, and... how y'all gonna put Lizzo up here last week and then this week? Yeah. <laughs> It's been a rough year for Lizzo, you know, I mean, lots of ups and downs, you know, um, and I can kind of understand where people are coming from, but at the same time, I mean, I don't, I mean, Jen, like, Lizzo can sing, yeah, I mean, like, she, the you girl know, can blow, like, she, she's a singer, so, she, yeah, I mean, she's a singer. She is. I mean, we we can't. Everybody can't be proud of her last week for being on the cover of a magazine, and then this week have an attitude because she won an award. Like, I I don't know. It just didn't, doesn't make sense to me what the problem is. She can sing. She's good. She's she's an she's an artist. She's a star. -up. She's she's got black or magic. But this is the thing. This kind of reminds me, like, because you know, Janet Jackson. She won plenty of Soul Train awards, and she's like. Super poppy. Yeah, right? but then but, there was that one time where Whitney Houston got booed yes. because she was too poppy or something. But or, it's kind of like, or, I don't know. Why are we doing this to our, mm. our black magical unicorns? I don't know. I don't know. Come on, Soul Train, get it together. Okay. If not, people are going to stop buying tickets <laughs> and start catching flights instead of getting on the train. 
<laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the fashion. What were some of your favorite looks? Okay, so speaking of Ari Lennox, she had on this green mm. goddess, like, drop dead gorgeous long gown thing going on and it was hot <laughs> well part of it because it was velvet but i mean <laughs> she looked fantastic <laughs> she looked great summer walker actually looked pretty good too right. she had like a halter thing yeah. on with some pants and it was really cute so and here are some of uh, the other red carpet looks of the Star train awards And what about Morris Day and Jimmy Jam and Listen, all that? Hey. They look great, you know, for these guys to be in the industry as long as they have been. For a long time. They're vampires. Hey, thank you ladies for joining us. Thank you, Kia. Thanks. And Bye thank guys. You, See you next week. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. And with that, we'll be back with our Mocha Minutes. Bam. Stay tuned for more Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. Mocha Minute is brought to you by BlackInTheBay.com, your online connection to everything that's Black in the Bay. Welcome back, Mocha in the Morning. I'm Kenya, and we're going to now have our Mocha yeah. Moment. And it's a very special Mocha Moment very special. because Little Miss Marion Scott. God, right out of Michigan. Yes. She showed up to take her school photo. Uh, they didn't allow her to take her photo because they didn't like the way her hair was done. Apparently she had a color in her hair. Well, check this out. Mm. So a professional photographer out of Chicago, uh, by the name of uh, Jermaine Horton Photography, boom, hello, gave her her yes. own. And she looks fabulous. Yes. So I don't think this school needs that kind of attention and I can't believe that that still happens, but you just made this little girl a star. Indeed. Hey there, are you enjoying Mocha in the Morning? Well, we're so glad that you are. We want your friends and family to enjoy it too. So please invite them to join us live on Fridays and also to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Welcome back, Mocha in the Morning. I'm Kenya, and I just want to say thank you so much. I'm going to thank you. It's been awesome having you guest host. Oh, my gosh. In the, in so the uh, uh, important Long lady chair, woman grown chair. woman chair. Yes. Grown woman chair. You have to be of a certain level. Oh, yeah. It's level to this. Yes. <laughs> Very, absolutely. But thanks so much for making me feel welcome and making me part of the Mocha in the Morning family. Absolutely. Anytime. And we want to thank our sponsor, Dual Curry Ford, the Portugal Cafe, and the Black in the Bay. And uh, you know what? We're going to close you out with some celebratory Sully Cruz. Oh, in New York. wait. Hey! Okay. Oh man! Boom! Thanks, 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 thanks. Yes, I'm in the Bronx, and uh, it was really super awesome uh, actually seeing that. And uh, yeah, yeah. that's a wrap. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> it was cute though. Oh my God, there were so many like Black yeah. on stage. Oh,